Thank you very much for attending this session at the first data Saturday uh, for the none. Uh, I'll talk about secrets of SQL dedicated pool. My name is Dennis Torres. And so that's me. Uh, I'm a data planter from MVP, trainer with some certifications, and I'm the leader of Malta Data Platform User Group. And on the right side, you can see my contacts uh, on the right side. Uh, feel free to connect. It will be a pleasure to connect to everyone. And feel free to ask any questions about the session or other subjects, any questions. So what we are talking about? We are talking about SQL pools, uh, SQL dedicated pools in Synapse Analytics. Well, many people already know that the old Azure SQL data house became a SQL pool, a SQL dedicated pool inside Synapse Analytics. That's interesting, that's good. But Synapse Analytics is way more than only the SQL dedicated pool. Synapse Analytics involves a workspace that can contain a SQL on demand pool, a SQL pool, a Spark pool, and so on. The SQL dedicated pool is just one piece of Synapse Analytics, just one small piece of the Synapse Analytics. Uh, but I'm putting a contest on the session, but the session is not about all this. On this session, we will focus on the SQL pool, which is the old SQL data warehouse. There, there are no many differences between the SQL pool and the old SQL data warehouse. There are some improvements, of course, but they are basically the same. The problem is that many people uh, confuse, especially when the name was Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Many people think, oh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse is just a SQL that is bigger for to include the data warehouse on it or something like that. Uh, so people think that uh, Azure SQL Data Warehouse is equal to Azure SQL. They couldn't be more wrong. It's not the same. Uh, of course, the most common behaviors are similar, but there are many other management tasks that we need to deal with. And it is very important, very critical. And this is one point that I would like you to get from this session. How SQL Data House can uh, perform very well, can make a great work, but you need to deal with it as SQL Data Warehouse. You can't just provision it and think it's a uh, simple uh, Azure SQL. It's not. It's not a simple Azure SQL. In fact, I saw this in, in some situations. I, I saw some situations where uh, some people provisioned the Azure SQL data warehouse and start complaining. This is terrible, it's low. Uh, it's too slow. Why, uh, why it's, I'm paying more for something so slow? Because they haven't configured the minimal settings for the SQL data warehouse to work well. So what's the SQL? Data warehouse. What's the dedicated SQL pool? Let's call it dedicated SQL pool. The dedicated SQL pool is an MPP architecture, a massive parallel processing architecture. This means that we have a control node, and this control node breaks the processing among many compute nodes. We will have many compute nodes, and the control node will break the processing among many compute nodes. Then each compute node makes its own task and return the result to the control node, and the control node 
merge the result. That's an MPP architecture. So you think, but this is Hadoop. You were talking about SQL. How this fits the SQL? Uh, how this fits the SQL? That's what makes things a bit confusing because it's easy for someone uh, to start looking to SQL data house as if it is a single database because that's the initial idea to make it transparent for an end user, uh, for an end user, not a DBA, uh, to make it transparent for an end user. So an end user see a database and tables inside this database, that's it. But what lies behind this, behind the curtains? What lies behind? Each table in this database is not really a single table. Each table is broken down in many pieces. And these pieces are called distributions. The way the records are broken down in the, on these pieces uh, depends on configurations that we make. We need to configure that. And, and the configuration that we make totally impacts the performance of the queries. We need to uh, choose the correct distribution configuration for each table. And the pieces, the distributions will be distributed among the compute nodes. These will be distributed among the compute nodes. So we think we are seeing a database, but is something like that database is in fact a virtual database. It's not a, only a single database. Uh, I can say that uh, behind the scenes, we are seeing 120 databases. Our table is broken down in 60 databases, and we have 60 more databases as cache database. For each database that we create in a SQL pool, we are talking about 120 databases uh, behind the curtains and working for us. And Azure, Azure SQL pool, uh, SQL dedicated pool, managing all this. So, compute nodes and distributions. When we provision an Azure SQL dedicated pool, we specify a performance level. Performance levels below 1000 are just for playing, just for playing, because they have a single compute node. Everything is on a single compute node. Uh, you, you get a considerable amount of memory, true. You get a considerable amount of memory. But still, everything is on a single compute pool. So it's considered for playing. From 1000 and beyond, things start to become serious. Uh, so we start to have two compute nodes, three compute nodes, four compute nodes, until 15,000 that gives us 30 compute nodes. So we can go up to 30 compute nodes in a single SQL dedicated pool, which means a single database up to 30 compute nodes. These are the compute nodes that will execute the processing. However, as a design decision, a SQL data warehouse has a fixed amount of distributions. What is a distribution? I mean, our table will be distributed in pieces. And how many pieces our table will have? So uh, the SQL dedicated pool 
create a fixed amount of distributions for every table. Every table has a fixed amount of distributions, and this amount of distributions is 60. So every table is broken down in 60 pieces. Every table has a total of 60 pieces. Then how these 60 pieces will be distributed among the compute nodes? It depends on the number of compute nodes we have. As you see, uh, on, the, on a single compute node, we will have 60 distributions in a single compute node. That's it. But if we have more compute nodes, they will be equally distributed among the compute nodes. For example, two compute nodes, you have 30 uh, tables, uh, 30 distributions for each compute node. Then, uh, then three compute nodes you have 20 distributions for each compute node four compute nodes you have 15 distributions for each compute node and the amount of memory also increases uh, for example with dw2000 on performance level you'll be already with uh, 1,200 gigabytes, one tera, 1.2 terabytes of memory. You will be already been using 1.2 terabytes of memory and four compute nodes to process your data, broken down in 50 distributions for each compute node. That's a big environment and made to process huge amount of rows and this environment is made to really process huge amount of rows and is it expensive well it's relative it may be important for a company so uh, the price may worth the use of the environment but let, let me give you an idea all the demonstrations that i make today will be made on the DW2000 performance level using four compute nodes uh, and 1.2 terabytes of memory. And uh, what's the price of this? Is $28 uh, for each hour of execution. Each hour of execution of this guy costs 20 eight uh, dollars of course it increases a lot if you go to the fifteen thousand uh, the fifteen thousand performance level so it's a bit expensive it's not something that you use for playing around uh, you have lower levels to play around uh, but for some activities it will worth it for sure. Let's talk about tables on the SQL dedicated pool. Uh, many people say, oh, isn't this a SQL? Isn't this the same? Everything the same? No. No. Uh, the environment is optimized for the data house. And we already saw about how this breakdown of the data in 60 database, 120 if we consider cache database. So what happens with the tables? Column store clustered index is defined by default. If you create a table and you don't specify uh, how the table will be stored, uh, a column store cluster in index will be used by default. It's the default on the dedicated SQL pool. Heap or host store clustered are still options. So if you want to set your table as a heap or your table as a host store cluster, these are still possible options. These are options possible. Uh, and 
one interesting difference. Primary key and unique needs to be non-clustered. You can't create a primary key clustered in a SQL dedicated pool. See the difference? It's not exactly like SQL. It's made for another purpose. So there are differences on how it works. You cannot create a primary key uh, clustered. And more than that, if you create a primary key or unique, it will help to find information. It will help you create plans. But you need to specify not enforced. You need to specify not enforced. It means the primary key or the unique will not be enforced by the SQL dedicated pool. It's not a production system. It's made for a warehouse, but not any warehouse, for giant warehouses. Distribution is always set. Uh, I thought that uh, our table is broken down in 60 distribution. This is always set. There are different distribution methods, but if you don't specify the distribution method for your table, uh, a default will be set. So every table has a distribution method to be broken down on the 60 distributions that Azure SQL, that uh, the SQL dedicated pool has. And we need to plan for the best distribution possible. Let's see a demonstration about these first concepts. First, some um, disclaimers is that I had uh, some unforeseen problems with Synapse last night. I'm still trying to solve. So this makes me make execute the demonstration on Azure Data Studio instead of executing directly on the portal on the Synapse Studio. That would be better, but it will not affect the demonstrations too much. So let me open our first demonstration. Trying to take this out my screen. It doesn't want to take out to get out. I you open a file? I built everything in notebooks. So I open the first one, a structure notebook, so we can understand the structure of the SQL dedicated pool. It's opening. While it's opening, let me be sure that I execute the zoom too, so I can zoom in when needed. So thinking about open someday. Okay. Uh, and then decide to close. Why are always doing a demonstration things go wrong? It seems like bugs are attracted to uh, to demonstrations uh, in the same way bees are attracting by attracted by honey. Okay. It's lower than still lower than the kernel, the contest of the execution. Let me clear out the results of this notebook I'll connect to on demand secure pool I have the on demand secure pool here
Okay, connect it to the on demand SQL pool. The Azure Data Studio has some, some special configurations for the Synapse. It doesn't mean it's completely prepared because in fact it's not, but it helps a bit. So I'll define the connection, connect to the on-demand SQL pool. Let me make a refresh here on the on-demand SQL pool because I want to see that tables on this guy. Okay, I'll create the table test, but I know the table test is already there because I was testing this before. So I'll drop table test just to ensure that the table doesn't exist anymore. Am I connected to correct environment? Yes. Um, sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, I was distracted and, and testing if you were uh, uh, observing the session. I need to connect to the dedicated, of course, not to the on demand. And here on the dedicated, I'll delete the table test, I'll drop the table test. Let's make a script to drop. Drop table test. Done. Now I'll create my table test. Uh, it's a silly table. No, nothing important on this table, but I'm defining an ID. I decided to put the primary key on this ID, but the primary key needs to be non-clustered and not enforced. Uh, and then I defi I'm defining as another field uh, value numeric here, 15 two, and defining the distribution as a hash based on an ID, on the ID. I will explain the possible distributions in just a few minutes. So let's create the table test. Okay, table test is created now. I will get some information about the table test. I want to get information about how the table test is using the distribution. We have here one system DMV PDW table distribution properties. This DMV show to us uh, how the table is distributed. So I execute this. And since I have not included any filter it's showing to me all the tables that I created on this SQL dedicated pool. And some of the tables have round robin distribution, while order of the tables have uh, hash distribution. So it's showing to me all the distributions on this environment. And uh, I see the test with the hash distribution that I asked for. I ask it to have the test, the hash distribution. Now we have another system DMV called SysPW nodes table. It's not Sys tables. It's not Sys object. It's SysPW nodes table. Let's see what this DMV return to us. 
so 660 rows 660 and I have tables here with very strange names very strange names why this well uh, first the amount 660 is because I have more tables I don't have only the test table and I'm not filtering so I have here uh, information for many tables, not only the test one. And I have more details here about, let me locate where it is here. The PDW node ID, the node in which this table is, and the distribution ID, the distribution inside this PDW node where this table is. So these tables are broken down on the PDW node ID and distribution ID. Remembering that each table has 60 distributions broken down among the nodes that we have and I'm working with four compute nodes. I'm working with a total of four compute nodes. Okay, but these names makes no sense. Yes, but let's start drawing things. First of all, uh, let's count things. Uh, how many tables do I have for each distribution? Let's go back. Uh, how many distributions I have for each PDW node? So, one hundred sixty-five, uh, because in fact it involves more than a single table. That's why it's counting one hundred sixty-five, uh, and I have four. PDW node. So I said I'm working with four compute nodes here, four compute nodes. And each compute node has 165 distributions. It means it has distributions for more than a single table. There is more than a single table here. Okay. Now we have another system table called CSPDW table mapping. CSPDW table mappings. Uh, using this system table, we can map between the physical tables, and that's what we were seeing, the physical tables and the logical tables. When I made the create table, uh, create table test, I was creating a logical table that was broken down in 60 pieces. How we broke down a table in 60 pieces? Creating 60 tables and hiding these from the user. The user thinks he's in a single table, but in fact, it's a set of 60 tables, 60 different tables. So we have the concept of uh, physical name and logical name. So he, I, I'm filtering here by the test this time. So we are seeing only the physical names related to the table test. So we see that we have exactly 60 distributions for the table test. The table test is distributed in 60 pieces inside the SQL dedicated pool. Great. Uh, let's analyze in more details. Checking how many distributions of this table, table test, I'm again filtering by test, I have on each compute node. And the result is 15. I have 15 distribution 
of table text on each compute node, totalizing 60 uh, distributions for the table test, which is a fixed value. But there are some strange details, for example, uh, with getting back to the result of the physical names, if you were uh, noticing the details here, you would note that the object ID are the same. The object ID of these tables are the same. How can I have two tables in a single database with the same object ID? And the answer is very simple. I can't. I can't have two tables with the same object ID on the same database. That's why I don't have a single database. I'm thinking I have a single database, but I don't have a single database. So I can use another DMV, she's PDW nodes, PDW physical database to check which are the physical database generated by my SQL, uh, SQL dedicated pool. Uh, I'm removing system database, so I'm getting only the database with the name distribution, and I will execute. And here we note that for each uh, for each distribution and and we note the distribution ID on the database name. For each distribution, we have two databases. One database which contains the data itself, and another database that is built to contain the cache. So we have both uh, two databases for each distribution. So if each table has 60 distributions, it means that we have 120 databases. For each table? No, not for each table. Uh, they will be the same. Uh, they are 100. 20 database to control the 60 distributions uh, that will break down the tables. So, we were used to think that an Azure dedicated pool, a SQL dedicated pool, or an Azure data house was a simple SQL. But what we are, seeing, we are discovering now is that everything that you, we see is virtual. Everything is virtual because we think we see a database, we think we see a table, but behind that database and that table, there are 120 databases and tables. And SQL dedicated pool is managing this for us. Uh, let's link information with the table, get some more details. So here I have the table name, the physical table name linked to this table in which node ID this physical table name is and which distribution ID this physical table name is. And I can make some grouping to get some totals. Again, the total of uh, distributions for each uh, compute node. We had already seen that. So with these queries, we are analyzing the internal structure of the Azure SQL dedicated pool. 
So we are analyzing the internal structure of the circle dedicated pool. We are seeing that it's way more than we usually think, and we need to deal with it carefully. We can't just get into a dedicated pool and think it's a regular cycle. It's not a regular cycle. Okay, how this will impact our work? How all this will impact our work? Let's continue on our slides. First, let's review the DMVs that we just saw, system DMVs. Uh, reg uh, regular DMVs for SQL Server are still there, but regular DMVs will basically return you the result re related to the virtual scenario. The virtual scenario where you have one single table. But the CSPDW underscore views are there to help you to get the details, the internal details about how the SQL dedicated pool is working. And why PDW? PDW means Parallel Data Warehouse. Everyone who is old enough will remember a long time ago when Microsoft created an appliance to be a, to be uh, implemented on premise it was not for the cloud it was for, for on premise uh, an appliance to be used on premise that was capable to break down our queries in many compute nodes and this was the parallel data warehouse or PDW so the Azure SQL Data Warehouse and now the SQL Dedicated Pool, which is an evaluation of the Azure SQL Data Warehouse, are based on the old structure of the PDW. They are based on the PDW. So System DMVs that we, we saw until now, uh, PDW table distribution properties, PDW nodes tables, PDW nodes, PDW physical database, get physical tables, physical database, uh, distribution properties to you know how the table is distributed, and table mappings to map, map the physical tables with the logical tables. Let's talk now about data distribution. Data distribution. We can use round robin. Remember that we are talking about 60 distributions. 60 slots of distribution. What using round robin means? Means that SQL Server will get the rows you start putting one row on each on each distribution without any care about what that row is or what that row contains and nothing it will just put one row on each distribution just that is the simple distribution when we don't know what to do when we don't know what to do we put around drop well let it, it distribute in its way Hash distribution. Hash distribution is based on a field. In this case, the SQL will create a hash from the field value and group the, the records with the similar hashes, breaking down the hashes in 60 groups. What happens? What happens is that similar information will be on similar distributions. And if we manage to put similar information on similar distributions, we may achieve a situation where our joins, our group buys, uh, our calculations don't need to cross the distributions to get the rows that we need. 
the calculations may be able to be done in a single distribution. The calculations may be easier and replicated. Replicated means that you, you will duplicate the content of the table. You will duplicate the content of the table on all distributions. Why? Simple, a reference table. If you have a reference table that is not that big, but it needs always to be linked to a fact table, usually a dim dimension table that needs always to be linked to a fact table, and the records have no specific order, instead of making SQL Server cross out the distributions to make the jo correct joins, you can just replicate the content of the table. So every distribution will have the entire content of the table. So the join can happen inside every distribution instead of crossing distributions. So here we are talking about distributions. That's the point. Uh, how our rows will be distributed among the 60, let's say 60 is lots of distribution that we have. We can use a hash function over a field. We can use round robin uh, or we can use uh, the replicated. These are three distribution methods. And an image about the result that I'm talking about. Imagine two fact tables, fact invoice and fact sale, and these tables are related to each other and needs to get related data. And needs to be grouped by, get related data, aggregated, and so on. In a round robin distribution, you have no control about what record is included on which distribution. So what will happen is that when executing the query, SQL Server will need to cross these distributions uh, like the first image. But if you manage to control a hash distribution for both tables and choose the correct field to control the hash distribution for both tables, what will happen is that uh, most of the time SQL Server will not need to cross the distributions. Uh, all the information will be on the same distribution. And when I say distribution, it involves a, a database. Uh, all the information will be inside the uh, same database and it will make the quiz fast. So the hash, the hash distribution is always better, isn't it? When you apply correctly, yes. But if you apply it in a wrong way, the hash distribution, what will happen? The data will become skewed. It means that some distributions will have much more records than other distributions, and the query performance will not be good. So you need to be careful about the distribution that you choose for your tables. So just to highlight what I mentioned on the beginning, see how you need a lot of more controls on SQL DW on SQL dedicated pool. It's not only about getting into it and start creating tables and making quizzes and believing that the performance will appear magically. No, it will not. You need to have a planning for that. Let's see a demonstration. So, 
let's wait wait the data studio decide that it can work okay uh, let me connect change connection to dedicated so i have one table here called trip and this table has a total of this number of records We are talking about 170 million records, uh, 170.2 million records. It's not a huge table, but has a considerable amount of records. You can imagine how some queries would behave in a regular SQL environment. You can imagine how they would behave. So here, I'm analyzing the how the rules are divided on the distributions. How I do that? Some of the of the system tables we already saw the table mappings. Uh, and others are regular system tables like sys objects, but here I'm using the PDW nodes column store whole groups. What this means? Well, column store index 101, column store index break the rows in groups of rows called row groups, and these row groups usually have one million rows each so the row groups usually have one million rows each so in order to to discover how the data is distributed i need to go down to the column store whole group level and get a total of rows so i will see uh, the distribution according to the physical tables And the nodes. Here, I'm seeing how the how many rows are distributed on each distribution ID uh, and PW, PDW node ID. And, and why there are more than one single record for each distribution ID? Because I'm talking about a whole groups. Each whole group has this amount of row, and whole group and one single distribution in the SQL dedicated book can have many row groups. And and at this point we are talking about column store index structure. So one single distribution can have many whole groups. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, since I think I'm almost running out of time, uh, I will go directly to some more practical examples and talk about the uh, one of the most critical details. But first, let's review the numbers. We have 60 distributions. We always have 60 distributions. We have two databases for each distribution. One is the data, and the other is for cache of the queries. And uh, the distributions are equally divided among the compute nodes. So the distribution broke down on compute nodes. And one critical feature in Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and it's that, this critical feature that kicks everyone on the ass are the resource classes. Azure SQL Data Warehouse was built to control 
huge amount of processing huge amount of processing so it's not only about you create a database and start putting things in and everything will work you end up saying this is slower than my my regular sql why i'm paying for this this will be the sentence that you'll be saying you need to learn about about resource classes first what are resource classes Resource classes control resources used for each user. So each user has a throttling of resources. Each user can use only one limited amount of resources of the SQL data warehouse. Has a throttling of resources. Uh, can be static or dynamic. There are these two types of resource classes, static or dynamic. Let's compare them in a while. And they appear as database rules. The resource classes appear as database rules inside the database. This means that we need to include the user on the resource classes that we would like, uh, according the resources that we would like that user to consume. The administrator has the smallest resource class possible. That's it. That's what kicks everyone in the ass by not studying the dedicated SQL pool in details and thinking that it's only a SQL because many people make its tests with uh the main account with the main administrator account thinking oh it needs to have good performance it will not have good performance why because has the smallest uh, uh resource class possible so the user administrator will uh, be passing by throttling you will not be using the all the resources of the azure sql data house the azure sql dedicated pool so you need to define different users for different kinds of workloads. User management in this case, in the case of the SQL dedicated pool, is not only about uh, security. The user management on the SQL dedicated pool is about performance, about the amount of resources that each user will consume. So you can create different users on different resource classes and define what kind of activity that each user will execute on the SQL dedicated pool. Of course, I'm not talking about the end user. I'm talking about the user that you will use for loading data, for querying data, accessing the, the, the data warehouse from uh, Power BI, and so on. You define the resource classes needed for each kind of user. So we have static resource classes and dynamic resources classes. What's the difference of static and dynamic resource classes? Uh, when we define a, the user who is a static resource class, the resources don't change when we scale the SQL dedicated pool. So the resources the user will use are that. The resources will not change according we scale the SQL pool. The user will use those resources, and that's it. With dynamic resource classes, the resources change when scaling. When we scale, the, the the SQL pool, the resources change and it will use more resources. So the static resource classes are good when you know a constant volume of data that you will pass by processing. So if the volume of data is constant, you know the resource that will be used and you can fit it in a static resource class. But if you have a variable or no volume of data, 
you will need a dynamic resource class. And it, when we scale this SQL dedicated pool, if you are using static resource classes, the scaling will improve the concurrence because the resources that each user will use are fixed, set by the static resource classes. So if we scale the SQL dedicated pool, you will accept a higher amount of concurrence queries. But with the dynamic resource classes, if we scale the SQL dedicated pool, you'll be improving the performance for the user query. So these are two different points of view, improve concurrence or improve performance. Uh, and of course, you don't need to choose one of them. You can put some user on static resource classes and some users on dynamic resource classes according to the need of the user. This is a planning that needs to be done on, on the SQL dedicated pool. Here, the dynamic resource classes, take a look at how the dynamic resource classes increase according to the CFS level. So according to the CFS level, we have the small RC, medium RC, RC the resource class. So small, medium, large, and extra large. And the consumption with this percentage that is set as consumption is the percent of memory that this resource class will consume. Uh, and see the smaller RC, for example, the percent of memory reduce because the small RC is planned for administrative tasks. The administrator is on the small RC. So this is planned for administrative tasks. And so it needs a, a smaller percentage of memory than other classes that user needs to increase. Uh, let's see a demonstration about all this. Let's see how this is working on in practice. Let me open another file. Okay, uh, let's count the number of holes the trip table has. But we had counted before, it's the same, the number of holes the table trip has. There, 170.2 million rows. So let's make some queries over this. Uh, first, uh, I will use, I'm using the table trip. This table trip uh, is using round robin. And I'm aggregating the content by month. So let's execute. And I see a result of dot nine five five in execution time less than one second. This means that the SQL data house on the DW2000, which is not even close to the highest level, uh, have processed uh, 170 million dot two records in less than one second. Yes, in less than one second. How long one, one of these queries would 
take on your SQL Server. Here, it took less than one second. Okay. Then, now I make the same query, but now in different tables. Uh, they are the same trip table and the same date table, but uh, I'm using a different schema because when I created these tables, I created these tables using hash distribution. So let me execute this hash distribution. And the result is dot 760. So you see, the group by was more efficient using hash distribution because the hash is built uh, on the correct tables, uh, the, on the correct fields. So it's more efficient uh, with hash distribution because I, I show the fields correctly. I can try again, just to avoid any kind of cache, uh, 873 on the first one. And the second one with this for 780, so it's more efficient. It's not uh, so expensive quick. Uh, Dennis, Dennis yes. sorry. Um, no more time for for the session. Sorry. Okay, no problem. So, uh, but that's that's basically the example. And summarizing the the rest is that we even so I have very good time here. Uh, I'm still executing as administrator. I would need to create users and execute as users with a higher resource class to get a better performance. And I would need to execute with higher users, higher resource class to get a better performance. And the point to extract from this session, besides all the details of the explanations about how it, it works, is that it's not equal to, to the regular SQL that we are used to. There are different plannings, there are different modeling, and so on. It's not the same as the regular SQL that we are used to. So I leave you with my contacts. Uh, feel free to connect. It will be a pleasure to connect, ask any questions. Uh, and thank you very much for attending. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please, you can put on the chat, but I think we have no more time. You can send me on Twitter, or, or anywhere, on email, anywhere. Thank you very much for attending.